Okay, everybody. Yes, I know, I'm wearing huge headphones, but they're really cool. So I'm going to use Microsoft Excel to show you how to enter some data, generate a plot, come up with a trend line, and how to linearize that set of data. All right, so let's switch over to Excel. So I have the uh, volume data that I copied right from our data sets here from the internet in the column A and the pressure data in column B. Notice that it's milliliters for volume and atmospheres for pressure. The units are going to make a significant difference depending on what kind of physical situation you're trying to study. Uh, so make sure you put your units in there. You'll also notice that if you put them in there when you go to generate a chart it will try to, Excel tries to guess uh, what to do with some of that data. So let's <clears throat> just jump right in and make a chart. So I'm going to highlight this. Notice that the stuff that's in column A, well, let's actually just take a look. Let's see what Excel does with this. We're going to go charts, one click other. I'm going to pick scatter plot. So you'll see that on this axis here, we put the automatically sort of put the pressure data. And on this axis here, they automatically put the volume data. So you'll also notice that they tried to label it. Matter of fact, I'm going to get rid of the legend right now. That's although that can be helpful for now. It's kind of in the way. So whatever you put in the first column, theoretically, is going to be the independent variable, and whatever's in the second column is going to be the uh, dependent variable. You can change that around inside Excel, but if you think to yourself, okay, this is going to be on the x-axis and this is going to be on the y-axis ahead of time, it makes it easier. Just put it in that order. So now that I've got a chart here, I'm going to click on Chart Layout, and I'm going to go to Trend Line. I'm going to show you one of the cool things you can do with trend lines in Excel. Under Type, I'm going to click Power, and under Options, I'm going to click Display Equation on Chart, and I'm going to hit OK. Uh, this is probably really hard to read, so I'm going to click on the equation. Let's go here to the font and make it, I don't know, 20. And then move it around a little bit. There we go. So look at this. Y equals some constant times X to the negative almost 1. So I'm hoping that you recognize this sort of curve as a 1 over Y equals 1 over X. Y equals some constant times 1 over X ahead of time. But you can have Excel guess at what order the polynomial is supposed to be. So that's one thing you can do. Uh, okay, I'm going to leave this chart here. And I'm going to come over here and add another column. I'm going to call this one 1 over P, and I'll put in parentheses here atmospheres to the negative 1. So I'll go ahead and continue my trend of uh, leaving in the units. So now we want to add a formula, and the easiest way to do that, there are a lot of ways to do it, but the easiest way to do it is to click in the cell where you want your formula to be, type the equal sign, and all of a sudden it, Excel switches into the I'm trying to interpret this as a mathematical relationship mode. And I'm going to say 1 divided by dollar sign B2. The dollar sign in this case meaning uh, I want to maintain the connection between this formula and which column I tell you, and the two representing which cell in that column. You'll notice that it highlighted it in blue over there. So if I hit Enter, C2 is now 1 over B2. Awesome. So I'm going to click that, and I'm going to highlight all the cells that I would like to copy that formula into, and when I paste it, You'll notice as I move my, as I select different boxes, when you look up here in the F of X, you'll see that it's changing dollar sign B8, dollar sign B7. So it automatically, when you copy and paste that way, uh, propagates the equation through there. Okay, cool. Let's do another chart. I'm going to say volume. I'm going to highlight all of that. And I'm going to hit command on my Mac and highlight all the uh, one over pressure column. And I'm going to click on chart. I'm going to click other, I'm going to do scatter, and you'll see that it's a line. Because what I've done is I graphed, I kept the volume column actually the same, so the x is actually the same. But instead of graphing uh, volume versus pressure, I'm graphing volume versus 1 over pressure. I just linearized my data, which is a very common task. It's not that hard to do, and it's something that we're going to do very often, so we might as well practice it frequently. So I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm going to go to chart layout. I'm going to click on uh, trend line. I'm going to go to trend line options, and I'm going to click 
uh, display equation on chart. And I'm going to, since I understand this physical system should have an intercept of zero, I'm going to click set intercept to zero and hit OK. And then my formula is probably really small again. So let's make it 20. And you'll notice that I've got y equals some constant times x, which, if you remember, x is 1 over pressure. So this is really a statement of Boyle's law that given uh, some given temperature for a uh, temperature that doesn't change, that if you were to multiply the pressure by the volume, it should be some constant. Um, now that's not exactly true when you start talking about quantum mechanics and statistical mechanics, but um, it's certainly close enough for many, many, many systems that we uh, depend on this relationship for. And I was able to use Excel to actually get that idea out of the data that we have. So assuming that your uncertainty is small enough that the data fits uh, the function pretty well, Excel is a really good way to take data, plot it, have it guessed at a trend line, and then for you to linearize the data yourself. So now I've got two charts in here, one showing pressure versus volume, and one showing one over pressure versus volume. And in both cases, they have physical meaning, but whenever you're able to linearize it, the slope of the line that you get, the y equals mx plus b, the, both the slope and the intercept can give you information about whatever system you're talking about. In this case, it turns out that the, the constant value of the uh, product of pressure and volume is this value 0.0.0987. For other systems, it would mean something else, like possibly the, the velocity of the system or the acceleration or some other kind of value. So this is a process that I hope you're able to do with ease. Um, if not, play this video again and again and again and again until it makes sense.